my name is Max Mitchell, and I serve as the 2017-2018 FBLA National President. We are so excited to continue our alumni interview series, and today I have Michael, the Chief Executive Officer of VPN.com, here with us today. Thank you, Michael, for joining us here today, and can you give a brief introduction about yourself? Yeah, thank you, Max. Um, first off, I saw, I saw Cole's video last week, just enjoyed everything Cole contributed at the national and state level. Um, my name's Michael Gargiulo. I was involved at the state level in Georgia FBLA. I ran for national president in 2010. Um, I've been building websites pretty much, pretty much since my time in FBLA and, and have built several up to uh, three to four million visitors a month. I attribute a lot of my early success to what I learned in FBLA, and I look forward to sharing a lot of that with uh, you here today, Max. All right, thank you, Michael, and I can't wait to get to all the information about your businesses. But before that, um, I want to ask you, how long have you been involved with FBLA PBL and what inspired you to initially get involved? So I started, I went to my first meeting in 2007. I come from a high school that's got about 150 uh, clubs and organizations. So Brookwood, um, you know, like most large five and six A high schools just has a lot going on. I wanted to get involved because I knew business was the uh, kind of career path I wanted to go down. I didn't know what inside of business, you know, when you're in ninth and 10th grade, you're, you're still learning a lot about yourself and what you want to do. And at the time I knew business was something I definitely wanted to do. And, um, you know, future business leaders of America just kind of made a lot of sense. So I went to my first meeting and, and that was uh, actually, that was, that was the rest, the rest was history because after that I, I pretty quickly got involved at the local level. Um, the following year got involved at the state level, wound up running for national president shortly thereafter. So um, started PBL at uh, the University of Georgia or started, started it up again. There's been, there's been several chapters started there, but um, love FBLA, love what it taught me uh, in high school and continues to teach me now as I kind of move into a, a alumni volunteer uh, role, but uh, still actively involved at the state level and love just sharing what I learned and was able to get out of the organization with others. Awesome. And now you mentioned that you continue to volunteer with FBLA at the state level. Why do you continue to volunteer? Um, you know, Monty Rhodes, who's the executive director of, of Georgia and really a lot of other alumni um, that have come through this program love to give back what Monty blessed us with. Um, he blessed us with, you know, a great opportunity to lead at the state level. Georgia, as you know, is one of the larger states in FBLA. So we get, um, you know, a unique opportunity to lead and we have a lot of resources um, devoted to us that I don't think many state chapters have. So I think a lot of us who come through this program and, and capture the type of experience that I did, uh, we feel compelled to share that with others. And, you know, some, some students uh, resonate with it a lot. Some, some don't. But for us, I think the alumni that do choose to give back, uh, even if we can just help one student a year get, you know, that much closer to obtaining um, their goals in life, you know, we're happy. So that, that in large part is why I give back. All right. And, and I do want to congratulate you again at the 2017 FBLA uh, Anaheim NLC. Uh, he, uh, Michael was uh, awarded the business person of the year on behalf of the Georgia state chapter. So again, we congratulate you on that uh, amazing accomplishment. Yeah, no, th thank you uh, so much, Max. And I think that was the night that you got elected. So uh, congratulations the other way as well. Thank you. Um, now, you, you mentioned that you were in FBLA, you, were, you uh, started PBL back up again at the University of Georgia. How exactly has FBLA PBL influenced your college and career decisions? Yeah, well, like I was saying you know, earlier, I knew business was the pathway I wanted to go down. When I got to UGA, um, well, first off, I probably wouldn't have been admitted into UGA if it not had been for the extracurricular experience that FBLA afforded me. And a lot of the recommendations, teacher and, and advisor recommendations that kind of came along with that. So getting into college was largely attributed to FBLA. But once I got there and really wanted to discover, you know, what, what do I major in? What do I do, you know, with my time? Um, I, I kind of got more focused with the business piece. I, I moved into um, 
majoring in finance and risk management, loved that. And I attribute that to a lot of my uh, accounting and business classes in high school. I got a really early privilege um, of, of learning a lot of information that a lot of schools just don't have funding to have accounting programs or finance programs anymore at the high school level. So um, I got to stretch my legs um, with, with that. And, and in terms of what FBLA, you know, did for me there, it just, it gave me that foundation to become more focused. I kind of already knew what I was looking for. And once I found, you know, the majors that resonated with me, um, it made a lot of sense. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't have really been possible had I not gone through FBLA or had the experiences or learnings that I did with it. Awesome. So, uh, you know, what kind of success stories have you heard from your peers or from people that you still keep in touch with about how FBLA has been able to help them? And as well as, you know, if you've helped uh, volunteer a student or be a mentor, how have you seen FBLA grow people? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's tough as a leader yourself, you know, there's, there's 250,000 students in the organization. So there it's difficult to get close to, you know, a lot of people um, at all those different levels. But for me and the students that I came through and led with um, everybody's really had the, um, the energy and ability with FBLA to go in their direction that they pursued and be confident with it. You know, Colton, a great friend of mine who, uh, came up um, with Cole actually in Georgia FBLA, ran for national president a year or two after I did. He has his own auctioneering business that I would say he attributes largely to FBLA. I know, um, you know, Cody Batchelor, he, he went overseas to teach in China. Um, Bryant, he's now a pastor and very passionate about that. I think a lot of the alumni that I got the privilege of, of, of teaching and learning with, um, Lee Lister, who just is a very good uh, contributor to everything FBLA at, at the Georgia level. I mean, we've, all of us have been giving back for more than 10 years. So we love what Georgia FBLA and, and the national level presented for us. But um, everybody, I think, is just very passionate and confident. And a lot of that was what Monty and Georgia FBLA taught us, that type of confidence um even at the local level is is hard to find depending on you know the resources and funding that these various school systems have so um to have that many people be passionate about what they're working on this early in life i think is just a sign that fbla really does lay a great foundation for students awesome and i think you mentioned this a little er earlier or at least you touched on it but what are some of the benefits that fbla has given to you uh, as a member and now as an alumni yeah, I mean, I, I love everything that, that FBLA has taken me through. It took me through the student piece of it originally, you know, coming up as someone who was just a member, um, then shifting into that kind of more leader uh, level at the local state. And, you know, I helped Mauricio at the national level as well. Um, it teaches you different things as you go through it. And I think that's just like in anything in life. Um, you get the opportunity to be around really unique and passionate people. And when uh, you recognize that that doesn't happen often um, in life, you, you really start to develop an appreciation for it as you go on and become an alumni and become, you know, a professional division member. I would say people who, you know, are a bit further down the road from me, um, you know, the Miss Buckley's of the world who have really been in the organization for, uh, you know, sometime they really get to see that kind of full expansive experience of how it goes from you being a member to just giving back over the course of your life. So I love all parts of it and it will continue to teach me lessons as I, as I just can continue to give back because that's, you know, at this point, I, we don't do it for the free food that we get or what little bit of stipend that comes our way. We do, we do it because we want to. Awesome. Now, I want to change focus a little bit to your current role. As I mentioned, you're the chief executive officer, CEO of VPN.com. Can you describe to us what you do and what your everyday uh, life looks like and what even is VPN.com? Yeah, yeah. So first and foremost, a VPN, for those that don't know, it's an app that uh, gives you a safer way to connect to the internet. So they've been around since pretty much the beginning of the internet. Um, companies and governments have used them to uh, secure the files they send back and forth to each other. 
Um, the, the unique thing about what we're doing now is uh, that that security and privacy appeal is starting to really creep through at the consumer level. So you're seeing, you know, everything from Edward Snowden to the San Bernardino case to, you know, really all of the issues that are in and around cyber today. Um, all of these reasons are pointing towards people using VPNs to connect to the internet, even while they're at home. So. Uh, we bought VPN.com uh, about a year ago. We paid um, very close to a million dollars uh, to acquire the domain, uh, the domain and another um, million, million and a half or so to build out the technology and everything that you see on the website now. So uh, again, FBLA, there's a lot that I've learned going through the last 18 months, but FBLA kind of gave me the foundation to approach it. Um, if, if I didn't know how to even, if I didn't know where to start or how to approach what I was doing, I would not, uh, I would not have obtained the domain one and we wouldn't be in this position um, too. So again, just FBLA gave me that confidence, that ability to uh, make a multi-million dollar deal happen and you don't see a lot of 26 year olds doing that. So, um, you know, it's just very unique how all of the events uh, transpired. And Max, I'm sorry, I forgot the other question that came along with that. Uh, well, just, uh, you know, I, I think you've kind of hit the nail on the head just to describe what you do and, and, and what VPN.com is. Um, oh yeah, the day to day, that's, that's what you mentioned. Um, yeah, I mean, the data, that most of my team is remote, so I have six or seven contractors that work with us all across the world, um, which is very nice. Um, most of my job now is just managing their workflows, managing the vision of what we're trying to do, and um, any administrative stuff that kind of comes along with that. Uh, I know we've got uh, some some neat questions lined up for the entrepreneurial piece of, of this this video, but we'll get to that here in a moment. Yeah, um, but before we reach that moment, um, I do have another question. Um, sure. I think you did touch on this a little bit, but what would you say is the most challenging aspect of your current role? And, and how... Max, you still with me? Oh, I'm sorry, there was a little lag there, but um, I heard most challenging piece of the current role, and what was the last piece, Max? And how FBLA has helped prepare you for that role. Yeah, um, I would say people are definitely the most challenging piece, you know, dealing with a lot of different personalities. I'm only dealing with, you know, probably 30 to 40 on a given month, just based on what we're trying to accomplish. And everybody has got different goals. Everybody's got different personalities. Everybody has got different conversation styles, whether it's via text or on the phone. And when you, as a, as a leader, you, you have your vision and your goal, you, you have to kind of move all the pieces around beneath you to help you accomplish these things. And, you know, getting a group of people um, to help move you forward towards those goals and also helping them reach their goals at the same time, it's challenging. Um, and especially doing that without having the ability to pay, um, you know, 10, 20 people full time or have project managers that can really come in and do a lot of the foundational um, work for you. you, you've got to kind of be that champion of it. And I would say a lot of that goes back at the most basic level to just leading your local chapter. You know, when you've got 10, 15, 20 students that are your peers, um, that you guys kind of have a common goal, uh, you're there because you want to, not because you have to. And you kind of come together on a, on a week in, week out, month in, month out basis to make the chapter better, make each other better, um, make your advisors happy and, and move forward in, in you know, a, a fulfilling manner. And that, I would say, is very similar to what I do now. It just, you know, now there's, there's dollars and cents involved. And, you know, aside from that, there's really not much difference aside, you know, from maybe a, a couple more years on the, on the, on the, the age. <laughs> Um, I think you touched on this a little, a little bit earlier, but I do want to expand on this point. You, you said that a lot of what you do today is reflected on how local chapters operate. How would you, um, what advice would you give members and local officers in terms of growing their chapters and managing their local chapters? Yeah, I, I think, you know, the local chapter piece of the entire FBLA, PBL organization is probably the most important because that's where the communication lives or dies. Um, you know, for those local leaders looking to expand your chapters, uh, it's 
it's gotten harder since I've left school. There's a lot more coming at us from technology. There's a lot more um, just involvement and activity with other clubs and competition for um, that involvement. But I would say, um, one, find find passionate people who want to lead your local chapter. You know, if you don't have a passionate local leader, um, it's really hard for your chapter to to grow, um, much less get your members excited about what you guys are doing that year. So if your local leaders, if you look around as, as your chapter president and um, you know, you're, you're looking at your vision for the year, you make sure that you have other leaders that you want to lead with that are passionate with you. Um, and then two, I would say you've got to do something that gets members or even non-members excited about the idea of joining FBLA. You know, there, there has to be some sort of incentive. Um, you know, for Brookwood, it was, we did a lot of chicken biscuits and free pizza to get people to meetings. That definitely helped fill the rooms. Um, and in turn, you know, grew our membership base. Did it, did it bring in, you know, is it the greatest source of, you know, quality first place national competitors? No, of course not. That That's where you kind of take your members over the year and groom them into, um, you know, good competitors and leaders for the next year. So, so balancing those two things, finding good quality local leaders and, um, you know, doing unique things that get meetings filled, doing, doing things that get people excited about coming to meetings. Uh, I would say are probably the two best things that that I can remember from from my chapter days when we were growing. And mind you, when I was there, I only grew my chapter from like forty to sixty people on my chapter, our chapter. But um, that works, I would say, at about any school. <laughs> awesome. Now I I want to jump back to uh, your role and your entrepreneurial uh, uh, career. So uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, you know you're very self driven. What is some advice that you would give some members who are interested in working in business or yeah um that aspect you know it learning learning how to run a company is uh it is a three to five year process especially if you've never done it before coming out of high school unless you've had an entrepreneur in your family or someone very close that you've been you know an apprentice of you know you probably want to spend some time following someone who's successful or on the path that you would like to be on um, entrepreneurship is just like any other job. You know, there's, there's good plumbers and there's bad plumbers and there's good financial analysts and there's bad financial analysts. Um, and entrepreneurship kind of gets lost in the mix of things because there's no like hard skill set that, that you can go to school for or boxes that you can check off a list to say, you know, I'm a good entrepreneur. You've got to be you got to be really adaptive to a lot of things. And that's why I think getting involved at the local level, leading at the local level, the regional level, the state level are great ways to kind of build out your tool, uh, tool set at the high school level. I think looking forward into college and beyond, um, find something that you're passionate about and, and tinker with it, especially if there's a business model to be had, you know, if you like to make things, sell them on Etsy. If you like to, to blog, you know, make a blog that, that's unique to whatever you're passionate about. Do things that align with what you get excited about because there will be a time when it's difficult if you pursue the entrepreneurship route. And it's, it's a lot harder to fall back in love with something that you're not that excited about. So that's usually where I think most people uh, get tripped up. They just do things for the sake of doing things. And in high school, you know, you're learning, you don't know what you're going to like. So that's kind of the whole experimentation piece of it. But I would say, um, do things you get excited about and, uh, just kind of stay, stay true to what you like. Don't, don't veer off just because there's money to be made or, um, m maybe do, but, um, you know, don't, don't spend a lot of time trying to make things work at, at this point in your career. You get so much time to learn so much time to fail and learn again that just going through participating and learning is is probably the best use of time at at you know 16 17 18 years old well thank you so much for your for your business insight and and entrepreneurship uh advice i do want to jump back to fbla for our final few questions sure. Um, my, uh, I, I do want to jump to the point that you were in PBL uh, at the University of Georgia. Uh, wh what would you recommend FBLA members and, and how would you encourage them to join Phi Beta Lambda at the collegiate level? 
Yeah, so moving from high school to college is, you know, there's a, there's a lot of transition in place. Um, you know, you're not living at home anymore. There's so many new opportunities out there, clubs and organizations that you can be a part of times 10 of whatever your, you know, high school offered you. So um, you're going to be inundated with a lot of options. The reason uh, a handful of us kind of stuck with PBL um, leaving, leaving high school was because we really believed in the organization and knew that, that um, PBL at UGA was not, it wasn't, it didn't exist. So um, that was kind of our, our thing that we championed from the get go. But if you're looking to, to participate in PBL, um, you know, it's a bit different than uh, FBLA uh, because there's so many options. There's so many different types of colleges, uh, the state and national level um, just are a lot. There's a lot of different types of people there, vocational schools, technical schools, large universities. So it's a much broader mix uh, of people and I think can really add to the experience that you get from FBLA. But, um, you know, kind of bringing it back to the college piece, just find things that um, you are excited about, you want to participate in. And, and PBL is a great option, especially if there's already uh, an existent PBL at your college. And if there's not, you know, reach out to Max or whoever, um, you know, to get more information about starting one because that was a great experience as well. Awesome. Now, could you describe to me what maybe was one of the best experiences you had in FBLA, one of the best experiences you had in PBL? Oh, um, yeah, Max, I would say, I would say probably the, the most special moment to me, um, and I guess this will kind of be all inclusive, but the most special moment to me was when I was on stage at the, uh, the, the state leadership conference in Georgia last year. I had no clue. Actually, I wasn't even on stage. I was in the front row. I had no clue that I was going to be asked up on stage to become the business person of the year for Georgia. Monty um, and so many other dedicated alumni were there to make that moment special for me. And uh, just having been involved in the organization for 10 years, that was a, uh, that was a moment I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Um, so that uh, was just a lot of hard work as an alumni, as a student, as a leader brought together in that special evening and to be able to share it with my advisors and family and, and other alumni was just, that was a special moment. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure it's, it's well-deserved for what you've given back to Georgia FBLA and beyond. Um, and I saved the hardest question for last, and that is, how would you describe FBLA PBL in one word? Um, in one word, I, I would say FBLA is um, foundational. It is foundational to be become the person that a lot of people want to become um, and it's a pathway that can teach you a lot of things early on in your just career as a just existence as a human there's a lot of uh, just lessons to be learned that this organization can offer you that a lot of students who don't go through it don't get the opportunity of so without it at your foundation um, I would say you're at a disadvantage. And for me, I know without FBLA and my foundation, I would be nowhere close to where I'm at now. So uh, foundational is my one word. All right. Well, thank you so much, Michael. Again, Michael uh, is the CEO for VPN.com. He was an FBLA member, a PBL member, and currently gives back to the state chapter of Georgia. We're so excited that you were so willing to share your experiences with us. And again, from all of us, we really appreciate um, what you've done for FBLA and, and how much you're willing to share your experience with us. No, thank you, Max. Thank you for the time today. And if any of our viewers want to reach out, um, feel free to find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I thank you for listening today. And again, thank you, Max and Ms. Buckley for having, having me on and, and sharing knowledge with, uh, with the whole nation. Thank you, Michael. And members, we will be sure to include his LinkedIn information down in the description below. And we hope that these interviews are serving you well, and we encourage you to share these as you see them. So thank you so much again, and we look forward to seeing you at the 2018 National Leadership Conference in Baltimore, Maryland. See you there, guys. Bye now.